Virgo Sun and Rising, welcome to your October 2023 Astro Update. It's Rena here. I'm recording outside in a park and I'm also recording on my laptop. So we'll see how this goes. Please let me know if this uh, recording is garbled uh, at any point because in the past I have um, refrained from using it precisely for that reason. So, what is happening in October? Well, Venus is going into your sign, um, and that's awesome. Uh, you just got through with a Mercury retrograde in your sign, and um, so Virgo people have been reviewing something in their lives as a whole. As a month begins, Mercury goes into Libra. On the fourth, Mercury is your ruler, so um, that possibly makes it more <laughs> important for you and this is the second house of earned income so this is going to have you crunching numbers um, I have the moon in Virgo and not to say that I'm this great math whiz but I really am like rain man I would say with with numbers um, I'm not talking about numerology so much as I, I memorize numbers very easily and I just glom onto them. And um, I, I, I would like to think that that has something to do with having the moon in uh, Virgo. Maybe that memory that, you know, <laughs> if you want to look at the moon as part of the memory. Um, and also, I would say too, because this is an earth house. That this activates that part of yourself that is very practical. So you you're very aligned to it. Um, this is Taurus's domain, it has to do with your income and possessions. And I don't think of Virgos as a particularly materialistic sign, but you still are geared to be, you know, into that to some degree. So. Um, you may be kind of aware of your budget and you know what you want to spend and then on the eighth Venus goes into your sign so that's very magnetic you know if you think about the law of attraction yes you have to go out and, and go after your dreams but you also have to allow for things to come to you so that's part of the the, the process so this could be a great time for you in the next few weeks to bring things to you, attract things. You're like a great attractor, even physically, because this is the house of the self. You may appear more attractive physically, and that may help you in one way or the other. Maybe you want to do something that improves your appearance. On the 10th, Pluto goes direct in yet another earth sign this is um, Capricorn and uh, this is the fifth house for you so this has been a time for some Virgo people to really look at the issue of love and what it has meant for you I would say um, because you recently have had Saturn enter that sector in, in in Pisces the seventh house of committed partnership I should say that this has become an issue for some uh, people who who are uh, Pisces I mean uh, Virgo Sun and rising because um, you've had Neptune in the seventh and now you have Saturn there and Saturn is retrograding too so that that has been the inner work the inner discipline as it applies to this area of life but we're talking about the fifth house here with um, Capricorn and how this can play out is that um, Virgo people who have had issues as it pertains to love may have been looking deeper within themselves and kind of saying okay how have I contributed to this issue? And that doesn't mean blaming the victim if you really feel that you have been victimized in love. 
but sometimes we make bad choices sometimes we we allow nonsense to go on far too long so the more that a person can kind of like admit that they have participated in these kinds of things the more they're able to make better choices be more discerning next time I, I see that as a good thing so um, you know uh, you're having this it's funny that there's this earth um, you know element that is playing into things here because it is really making things very um, grounded um, and that's the the one great thing about earth influences is that the tangibility factor is there so now you can be empowered in love in an outer way with Jupiter, with uh, Pluto going direct. It's not just about digging within yourself. On the 12th, Mars goes into Scorpio. And this is a friendly angle because this is um, the third house. This is a, a sextile. And this is a house that is ruled by Mercury in the sign of Gemini. Mars in the third can sometimes mean that a person is argumentative. So watch out for that tendency. Uh, as somebody with the moon in Virgo myself, you know, that snarkiness is never far away, is it? But this gives you this kind of a desire, you know, through Mars to express yourself. But sometimes your, your um, verbalizations may be met with resistance and pushback. And so you have to decide if you're going to kind of keep that going or if you're going to uh, just let it be. Once you've said your piece, you can just let it be. You don't have to belabor the point. And you can also say things in as... Um, you know, non-confrontational as possible. Truth, so I, I notice a lot of people saying, well, I'm just saying the truth, you know, and that kind of thing is problematic because uh, truth can be used as a weapon. I have the sun in Sagittarius, and this is very commonplace to, you know, Sages love truth, and you may have the moon in, in Sag uh, as a, or you might, you know, if, if, if Virgo is your rising sign, your sun may be in Sagittarius. And we have to be mindful that the truth doesn't have to... Um, we, we should never hide behind the truth, is what I mean to say. But this can also be that you have a thirst for knowledge. You have a thirst for... Maybe you're going to be very active in, you know, building a website or... I mean, um, yeah, building a website or... Something along those lines, because the third house can be social media. So this is a house of teaching and learning. So perhaps you'll be tutoring. Um, this is right up the alley of Virgo is to be a teacher or some sort of tutor. You, you might have conflict with siblings or neighbors. Um, the third house can be neighbors, but for relatives, it can be siblings aunts, uncles, cousins, so extended family members. So if there is some particular issue that is um, on the, you know, everybody's minds, I would say in particular an inheritance because in late September there's a full moon and a late degree, not, why am I saying a late degree? There's a full moon at six degrees of Aries that could fall in your eighth house and that might might indicate finding out about some kind of inheritance and then people what happens when money is involved some people get ugly some people are um, in that reptilian mindset where they have to they act like they they have to 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 to, to be grasping and go after things and it's like no you don't have to do that 
you can you can uh, you know stay above the fray and be more humane on the 14th we have a solar eclipse at 21 degrees of Libra so this is your money house again uh, Virgo this is a great time for you to envision um, income streams you may not know exactly how it's going to play out but if you get intentional about it this can be like a very good time because you're experiencing these triggers to the money houses the the place of uh, Libra in right now which is your second house and then the eighth house being Aries which is other people's money or collective shared money so both of these areas are being um, triggered through these eclipses in the next year so some people may interpret this as okay your finances could be turned upside down well anything is possible but I see it as the potential for great growth so you know you can look at it um, that way as well and and because this is a solar eclipse is it's a powerful new moon so it could have uh, lots of opportunities for you in terms of like um, creating new income streams okay on the 22nd mercury goes into scorpio so into that third house and that's you know mercury mercury is the planet of communication in its own domain so that just adds to it so you have mercury and mars here and the the kind of communication that you will be engaged in is very uh, penetrating because it's in Scorpio so um, you know the, the the analytical skills of Virgo combined with um, that scorpionic ability to kind of go beneath the surface and really you know get to the truth in a very perceptive way is amazing it's a great combination on the 23rd the Sun goes into Scorpio so there you have it you have another planet in that third house and this is not uncommon because this is the time of year with the, you know these are personal planets but um, just to say uh, you've had eclipses in this house in the past 18 months so there have been changes to this area for you speaking of which on the 28th there is a lunar eclipse at five degrees of Taurus so more earth energy this is coming from your ninth house which is the house of Sagittarius the house of expansion through the mind through higher learning through the um, or through just God and and your explorations with the divine this can be the um, house of yeah when I said higher learning I'm talking about academia and also geographically through travels but this is also going to affect people in the eighth house maybe the majority of you I'm not one of those people that's really good about talking about that kind of thing because my my mind I like to just keep it like and pretend that everybody's going to have it in the ninth house but a lot of you may have it in the eighth house so that full moon I was talking about in Aries that may have affected your seventh house um, of committed partnership and legal affairs and then this is happening in your eighth house but this is a solar eclipse so, I mean a lunar eclipse so it's a very powerful full moon and this could be a great purge but it could also bring up a lot of hidden stuff connected with other people's money so any kind of like seven of swords you know kind of sketchy dealings uh, th theft even you know someone if you have been in a marriage that you are getting dissolved and you you recently and you remember you got Neptune in the seventh house 
So if you had at that full moon, if it was in your seventh house, and you found out that your soon-to-be ex was raiding a certain account that you shared with him or her, then this could be just like a total like realization that your shared resources have been you know raided you've been deceived secrets are coming out but this could be with family members too so it could be a very emotional time if you have it in the eighth if it's in the ninth I think that it's going to be more um kind of like um a spiritual download in the eighth house it can be more like shadow work a big purge maybe even physically because um the eighth house is like the purification it's not necessarily connected to the body but everything is connected obviously so um yeah that could be quite an emotional end for to the month if it's in your eighth house but even in the ninth i mean it's a lunar eclipse so it's going to the eighth and the ninth houses are both connected to spirituality so this could be a great time for transcendence for virgo people and because you are so connected to the earth it can be welcomed because you can transcend just the 3d reality Okay, that's what I have for you, Virgo. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading, I'm promoting my double um, reading package deals called my Deep Dive Readings, which are an hour of natal chart analysis and an hour of transits for the upcoming 12 months for a special price. I also have a reading with that plus, it's like a triple reading, with the tarot called the whole enchilada for a special price i have those readings separately too as well as you know relationship readings life path slash career readings money readings you know that kind of thing um you can find out more information at the link below hear that plane above me that proves that i'm outside i'm at rain thanks for listening bye